One of the biggest lies in religion is that the dead are not really dead. Their souls fly around looking at you. They can see you and talk with you and make things happen for you. Not true, not true. The Black Panther movie to me was very entertaining. I enjoyed it. The only reason I'm mentioning this movie is because it has a good example of the dead being alive and contacting the dead. It's a movie. It's a movie that I enjoy. But in real life, this stuff is believed big time, big time. I have a history book here that I took from my father. It's my father's when he went to school. It's from slavery to freedom. A History of the Negro Americans. It's the fourth edition by John Hope Franklin. And he's, uh, I hear, pretty famous. But I started reading this book because I wanted to learn a little more about black history just on my own. I didn't go to school for any of it. But my father had these books. And the first thing I noticed was the religion page. Well, it wasn't the first thing, but it grabbed my attention. And I'm going to show you why <laughs> by reading some of it to you. Oh, just a little short excerpt. And this is in the religion part. The Africans believed that the spirits of their forefathers had unlimited power over their lives. In this, as in almost every aspect of African life, the kinship group was important. It was devoutly believed that the spirit that dwelled in the relative was deified upon death <laughs> and that it continued to live and take an active interest in the family. The spirits of early ancestors had been free to wield an influence for such a long time that they were much more powerful than the spirits of the more recently deceased. Hence, the devout worship and the complete deification of the early ancestors. Not only were the spirits of the deceased members of the family worship, but a similar high regard was held for the spirits that dwell in the family land, the trees and rocks in the community of the kinship group and the sky above the community. Now, I kept reading and kept reading and I got over to the next part, which is still under this section, religion. And it says, many had great confidence in the efficiency of magical practices. <laughs> and it may be that this blind reliance on the divination of sorceries was responsible in part for the retardation of the civilization of Africa. The elaborateness of funeral rites all over the continent assessed to the regard that the natives had for the idea that spirits of the dead played an important part in the life of the kinship group. The funeral was a climax of life and costly extensive rituals was uh, sacred obligation of the survivors from slavery to freedom. Now, I, I didn't write that. This John Hope Franklin guy wrote it. That's what his discoveries were. This belief is how Satan has broken into Christianity and has controlled churches and the people in them for years. Christians say when you die, you go straight to heaven or tormented in hell. Not true. Not true. From this, from this belief, the next step is to communicate with the dead in all its facets, facets. I think the misunderstanding of the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, Luke chapter 16, 19 through Luke chapter 17, verse 1, is a major cause 
I show you some verses later, maybe. Show. So, <clears throat> I'm to show you the next book. This is Can We Communicate with the Dead? The Challenging Counterfeit. It's by Ralph Gasson. I, I think. I don't know how to pronounce these names. Gasson. Gasson says the real power behind spiritualism as seen from the inside by a former medium, Ralph Gasson. Read the back of it now. He says, I saw my first spirit when I was five years old. Author Ralph Gasson writes from personal knowledge, which makes his book an important statement in this time of renewed interest in spiritualism, occultism, and psychic phenomena. He is the real story behind psychic phenomena by one who has had both the revelation given to spiritualists and the true biblical gift of Holy Spirit and has learned the important difference between them. <laughs> so I read this book. I guess I can't read it on here for you. You have to go out and get it. The Challenging Counterfeit, Ralph Gasson. <laughs> now, People think they are talking to dead loved ones again. And I am very slow, if at all, to tell people they are wrong because I can tell they get false, short-lived comfort out of the dead being alive. Some work harder because they believe they are getting power from the lost loved ones who they think sees them. Think of the athletes that point up. The Lazarus record is a parable where Jesus is trying to help the listeners simply to see that one needs to repent now because when you die, it is too late. Jesus is using the beliefs of the Pharisees to make that point. In Mark chapter four, verse 11. I'm going to read it. And he says, and he said unto them. The disciples, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them, because back in Luke, when they're talking, talking to Lazarus, they were talking to the Pharisees, not to the twelve disciples. The parables was to the Pharisees. Now let me read it again. And he said unto them, the disciples, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, see the, them that were out were the, were the uh, Pharisees, all these things are done in parables. See, so they didn't give him, Jesus Christ didn't tell them the real truth. It was just what they believed. He used it against their own beliefs. So that story is not true. In Luke chapter 17, verse one, if you read the story of Lazarus, that's in Luke chapter 16. And then there's a chapter break where I think that verse should end in Luke chapter 17, verse one. I mean, that that story should end in chapter 17 of Luke chapter one. Yeah, Luke chapter 17, verse 1, and it says, <laughs> it says, um, Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible, talking about it is impossible, but the offenses will come, but woe unto him through whom they come. It is impossible for the dead to be carrying on a conversation like the Pharisees believed. Men need to repent, and if man does not repent, he dies forever. That is the, the, the <laughs> um, woe unto them. That's what that is. And I looked this up in a, several verses, and none of them have that. So anyway, it's up to you. I don't need it. Go to Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verses 4 through 6, and we'll read. For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. If you're alive, you got hope for a living dog is better than a dead lion. So you got a dog, but you got a dead lion, too. Which one is going to be better for you? The living dog, not the dead lion laying there unless you're going to use it for a rug. <laughs> for the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more reward for the memory of them is forgotten. The memory of the dead. There's no memory of the dead. The, the, the dead doesn't have a memory is what it's saying. Also their love, their love, the dead, verse six, also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. 
neither have they any more portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. That's in Ecclesiastes. Can you get it any clearer? <clears throat> now, 1 Chronicles chapter 10, verse 13. This is about a familiar spirit. A familiar spirit is a fallen angel that mimics a loved one. A lot of seances are tricks, but some are real concerning these fallen angels or familiar spirits. First Chronicles chapter 10, verse 13. So Saul died for his transgression, which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not. And also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it. See it? <laughs> Think now. Jesus Christ is raised from the dead. What's the big deal that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead is everybody else is already flying around up there. Not true. Jesus Christ is the only man that is raised from the dead. <laughs> Christians are gathered together at the same time. See how fair God has all this? That we all get to go at the same time. Everybody else that like right now who are dead are dead and dead. <laughs> That's it. First Thessalonians chapter four, verse 16 through 18. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. The ones who died believing in Christ, like if Christ came right now, the ones that are dead believing in Christ will rise up first. That's what that verse means. Then which we are alive, say, see, I'm alive. I would get on the boat with them. I'd be caught up together with them. That's what verse 17 says. Then when we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Then it says, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. A certain disciple. The king.